Guard for All Guard uh, powers Ethiopia, empowers Africa, and also beyond that, Guard also sustains uh, the wallet. Please uh, allow me first to congratulate to all Ethiopians uh, and our African brothers uh, and sisters uh, on the occasion of uh, the completion of the third feeling of uh, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, uh, and also the starting of uh, the second turbine of uh, uh, the Guard. Uh, having said that, I would like to welcome uh, His Excellency uh, Ambassador Henok Tefara uh, and our speakers, uh, Dr. Truso Asafa, Professor Hagai Ehrlich, uh, and uh, my sister, uh, Hermela Brook, who is going to be an anchor of this uh, webinar tonight. Uh, she, she is a moderator, and my colleagues at uh, Defend Ethiopia Task Force and member of Defend Ethiopia who are here, who made it happen, uh, this event uh, together, uh, and also to all the participants here, welcome uh, once again, uh, and thank you really for your time in advance. Uh, uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Henok Shao, I think the presentation has been done. Uh, I am very in awe of uh, your achievements, uh, and uh, you were, um, you are assigned as uh, ambassador since 2018. Uh, you're the ambassador of Ethiopia to France, Spain, Portugal, and the Holy uh, See. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for uh, being uh, this key figure also in Europe uh, in pushing back all the, the narratives that came from the status quo. I leave you the floor for we are about to shake the status quo and announce the, the, the development and uh, the the, the true image that we are all gathering together to rebuild, renew, and forge. Mr. Uh, Mr. Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hermela. Um, thank you very much as well to uh, defend the Ethiopia ch chapters uh, here in Europe, uh, who are doing a stellar job in upholding the interests of our beloved country. Uh, I'm very honored and humbled to have been uh, asked to do the opening uh, remarks for this uh, webinar. Uh, I see that there are eminent uh, experts on water, uh, geopolitical issues. Uh, Professor Haga Erlich is here. I uh, salute you, sir. Dr. Toroso, uh, and of course, uh, all the other uh, participants and members from uh, uh, Defend Ethiopia, I see Ato Elias from uh, uh, France, who's also here with us. Um, it's really a, a very timely issue, uh, and I would say that uh, you have both chosen the right timing for organizing this uh, webinar and also the right uh, theme or the right title. Um, as you we all know, um, the third filling of uh, the reservoir was completed uh, on uh, the 11th of August uh, of this year. It marked the inauguration of the, circuit of the second turbine with a capacity of uh, 375 megawatt. And now the GERD lower level has reached uh, 600 meters with a total uh, storage of, uh, in the three years of uh, about 22 billion cubic meters of water. So we're here, first and foremost, to celebrate this milestone, as Hermela pointed out, to thank all those Ethiopians and uh, friends of Ethiopia uh, who have uh, made this uh, milestone possible through their resilience, unwavering commitment and support, whether through their uh, uh, wallet or through their ideas or even through their advocacy. So we thank all Ethiopians both here uh, uh, abroad and also in the country. All of us Ethiopians have contributed uh, to this uh, really milestone project, both in the history of Ethiopia and in the history of Africa in some way or another. I will start my maybe remarks by uh, uh, outlining my thinking regarding uh, the GERD because I feel that the title you have chosen is uh, is apropos for that. The, the title is uh, GERD Powers Ethiopia, GERD Empowers Africa, and GERD Sustains the World. GERD Powers Ethiopia. 
uh, when uh, the GERD powers Ethiopia, uh, our country, our beloved country, in multiple ways. Uh, of course, economically, politically, but also, I would rather say, more importantly, spiritually. Uh, for centuries, Ethiopians have seen the Nile flow out of their territory without benefiting from its immense resources. For centuries, uh, Ethiopians have languished in poverty whilst they contribute about 86% of all the waters of the Nile. That historical injustice is now being put to an end by this generation of Ethiopians. Therefore, we should all be very proud and finish the job. When uh, His Excellency Prime Minister Dr. Abiy came to power in 2018, the GER project was in danger, in danger of being derailed. He and his team put it on track and accelerated the construction. And today we have reached about 90% of the completion of this milestone project. When fully completed, the GERD is expected to generate over 5,000 megawatts of electricity necessary to drive our march towards food self-sufficiency, to transform our economy from a rural agriculture-based economy to an industrialized value addition economy and will enable those Ethiopians, about 65 million of them who today do not have access to electricity. 65 million Ethiopians, that's the population roughly of France that today do not have access to electricity in Ethiopia. As we know, or as we may know, Ethiopia's GDP some 20 years ago was just $10 billion. Today, it's roughly around 100 billion. If we work hard and with the support of projects such as DERG, we will reach a trillion dollar economy in the next 20 years. This means we'll have an economy about the size of Spain or Italy. And we can do it because we have a young, trainable population of 120 million. We have sufficient and abundant arable land with the right policies and with the infrastructure such as dirt, we will transform our economy from a productive, from a, to a productive and industrialized economy and will extricate our people from poverty. Now, when I say that the Dirk powers our country spiritually, what I mean is that our country, as we all know, is fractured along many multiple identity lines. But what unites us as Ethiopians, I believe, is far, far more important than what divides us. The GERD, as a national project, has brought together all Ethiopians, whatever their ethnicity, whatever their religion, whatever their gender, and all Ethiopians have contributed in one way or another to this project, which has united us and shown us that we can do whatever we can, what we can do whatever we want if we set our mind up to it. And beyond the contribution of all Ethiopians, it has shown us that with unity of purpose, with dedication, we can achieve anything. It has also shown us that our social fabric remains strong, that Ethiopia as an identity remains strong, and that whatever our enemies, near or afar, try to do to sow seeds among us, seeds of hate and division, we have the capacity within us to rise above it and to reaffirm that our destinies are bound. Well, that's why I say the, the good is actually a renaissance of Ethiopia, not just in a physical way, but in a spiritual way. So the GERD has really reaffirmed the, uh, an age-old and time-tested Ethiopian resilience or can-do attitude in the face of multiple challenges. Secondly, the GERD empowers Africa. As we all know, it was built and is being built today with the money and resources uh, and mobilization of Ethiopians, but not only Ethiopians, of Africans uh, uh, throughout the world. It, the GERD stands, therefore, as a vivid proof that if we Africans uh, decide and do what is best for us, that we refuse dictations wherever they may come from, that if we reaffirm that we are the masters of our destiny 
and we mobilize our populations for the development of our countries, then we can succeed. In many ways, the GERD for me symbolizes the refusal of injustice and unfairness that has always permeated international relations and for which we have been at the receiving end for so many years and centuries. It is, uh, in many ways, the revival of the spirit of Adwa, the spirit where we can do anything and defeat any opposition, however strong, that comes our way if we are united. We may recall that uh, on the 25th of May, 1963, our forefathers uh, established the organization of African unity in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Now, many outside Africa and some also within Africa criticized the AU or now the AU, then the OAU as not having done much. I beg to differ and I believe that the facts speak differently. It is the OAU, through its Liberation Committee, based in Tanzania, that coordinated the political, economic, and military support for African liberation movements throughout the continent. And in just 30 years, in 1994, United Africa managed to put apartheid into the dustbins of history and to liberate the continent. Africa United in 30 years put an end to a subjugation of the continent which lasted for more than 300 years. That is what Africa can do with it's United. So the AOU and the AU deserves much credit for Africa standing tall as it is today. But the political liberation of Africa is not enough. It is now up to us and this generation of Ethiopians and Africans to ensure that the economic liberation of Africa is fulfilled. And this will only be achieved if we are united like in previous years and if we reinforce African integration. We are, sought, we are set on this path. In 2021, as you may know, the Continent and Free Trade Area Agreement came into place and the Secretariat of this Free Trade Area was established in Accra Ghana. The idea being that we will have the free flow of goods and services throughout the continent and eventually of peoples. This is also a milestone. And the GERD is part of the story of African unification because without infrastructure linking African countries, African integration is not possible. And without African economic integration, there cannot be African development. It is as simple as that. To fuel Africa's development, we need energy. This energy will come from such mega projects as the GERD. The GERD is part of the African Union Agenda 2063, a program for infrastructure development in Africa, or what uh, is referred to as PIDA. It is a major project aimed at connecting countries through energy in order to fuel their transformation. Therefore, with uh, this in mind, and with a view to ensure a peaceful, uh, prosperous, and integrated Africa, projects such as the GERD are critical. Lastly, the GERD sustains the world. We all know that uh, life on this planet, wherever we are, can only be sustainable if all peoples throughout the world, including in Africa, accede to a life of dignity, a life which is free from want. It is no longer possible for the developed world to live in abundance while developing countries, such as those in Africa, languish in poverty. That is no longer sustainable. And a life of dignity for Africans means industrialization of Africa, powered by clean energy sources. The GERD is such a project. It is the largest hydroelectric dam on the continent, which will provide clean and renewable energy for a sustainable world 
for Ethiopia and for neighboring countries. Ethiopia, along with the construction of the GERD for the last three years, has been engaged in the Green Legacy Campaign and has planted about 25 billion seeds, a concrete example of fighting climate change and ensuring that, at least at our level, the Paris Agreement on Climate was objective of avoiding dangerous climate change by limiting global warming to well below 2% or two, 2 degrees centigrade is attained. This is what we are doing as a poor country, as Africans, towards this uh, common uh, goal. And we are doing it despite all odds, despite opposition. We believe that the GERD is a win-win instrument for cooperation between Nile riparian countries. It will enable fair and equitable utilization by all countries without causing significant harm to any of them. As we all know, the filling of the reservoir of the dam is being undertaken in the high rainy season. And the dam is meant solely for generating electricity without any consumption of water. So there should really be no concern by the lower riparian countries. It should not be a source of concern for them. On the contrary, it can and must be used as a formidable tool for cooperation and integration with Ethiopia generating electricity and selling it both to the Sudan and to Egypt. It can be uh, a tool for regulating the flow of water and to better manage the effects of torrential floods that we are seeing in both Sudan and Egypt during the rainy season with tremendous consequences in terms of destruction of property and the loss of life. In the 21st century, zero sum game is no longer possible. One side could not sustainably prosper at the detriment of the other, especially over a shared transboundary resource. The only viable solution is a win-win cooperation. Ethiopia is ready for it. And the sooner we realize it, we realize it and act accordingly, the sooner we will be in a collective position to ensure the prosperity of all the riparian country populations. Lastly, I want to send out a call to all Ethiopians, all Africans, and all friends of Ethiopia. Let's redouble our efforts to, find out, to support the dam with its completion. Let's redouble our efforts through our advocacy. Let's complete it for a prosperous Ethiopia, for a united Africa, and for a better world. Thank you very much.